so yeah, I'm I'm Joey. I'm a um, I'm a product designer. I work I build marketing software and and things like that as my day job. Um, and so I've uh, since hearing about the helium stuff uh, late last year, sort of just been diving into it. Um, and now I've got a, a whole bunch of hot spots and a whole office full of sensors and uh, uh, concurrent projects. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a sort of deep dive into um, one of the projects that's starting to wrap up a little bit. Um, and it's a good story of kind of um, from a design side, recognizing an issue and sort of finding solutions for it, even if that solution is, um, you know, when you have helium and that's your hammer, everything's a, a nail for helium. Um, there, there are probably certainly easier ways to solve some of these things, but I think this is a really good way to do it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just a little bit of uh, me trying to do things in not a, a too code intensive way, uh, sort of having a background for more just like uh, web design. Um, so anyway, that's me. Uh, this project is about uh, the issue that I, well, for a little context, there's a, a coffee shop near my office um, and I just sort of one day was asking them uh, what sort of issues they have in their coffee shop that could maybe be solved with a really simple sensor. Um, and fortunately that conversation ended up being really fruitful. Um, and what they highlighted is that they keep all of their coffee in um, a big trash can. It's a NSF food safe uh, to, to do it this way. Um, but how this works is the coffee shop and roastery, um, they're both owned by the same person. Um, they do all of their roasting and then they put all the beans in here and then they take this big bin to the coffee shop and they use it up until it's all gone. And then they have to go back and do more roasting. Um, and it turns out with COVID and uh, just sort of the invariability of like uh, demand for things right now, um, it's been really hard for them to uh, forecast when they're going to need to roast new beans um, and also just to generally understand how much coffee is left. Um, and Chris, the owner of the shop, um, had, like as part of this conversation complained to me, he's like, he'll get pictures like the one on the right and he actually has no real idea of how much coffee is in that, that bin because um, it's real hard to tell from just a single photo. Um, and so the first thing that came to my mind is like, well, if things got a lid, we can measure the distance from the top of the can to the top of the coffee. And so as usage changes over time, we can get a really good sense for like how much coffee is left in that bin. Um, and that's going to give them a little bit of idea of like how to forecast. So my first approach for this was just like dive straight in. You know, everyone has probably seen these ultrasonic range sensors. Um, and so I, I first started sort of playing around with them and, uh, you know, thinking about how I could sort of enclose one of these in a way that would be like a nice little attachment for the top of the lid. Um, but I wasn't really happy with the um, accuracy that was being offered with these devices. And I didn't really have a good sense for uh, energy usage that was gonna be coming off of these um, without a whole lot of, like I don't have the, uh, the equipment to do that sort of thing. Um, and so what I realized this project really needed was lasers. Um, and so after looking around for a little bit, I uh, had stumbled across these um, uh, ST micro uh, laser range find modules. Um, and so basically what this is, is a tiny little laser diode and a tiny little photo sensor with probably a whole bunch of other proprietary things that are happening uh, behind the scenes there. It's really fascinating um, uh, white paper on the, the actual chip. Um, but I ordered one of these and it actually showed up, which has been a huge issue with uh, AliExpress if anyone's been messing with that lately. Um, and it was ended up being real simple to sort of get it plugged in. Um, I put together some prototype code just to sort of see how the device worked and so what sort of readings I could get out of it. Um, and I did all of this on just a ESP32 board, not worrying about um, LoRaWAN or anything yet. Um, so I managed to get everything all dialed in. Um, and then from there, um, got to put the device a together a little bit with a uh, LoRaWAN board. And so in this case, I'm using the Heltec CubeCell, which is a little bit of a shift for me. Um, turns out it's a really nice development board, but with some kind of terrible documentation. 
Um, and then it ends up being a really simple wiring configuration. Uh, it's just uh, I squared C um, straight into the board. You just send requests and it sort of returns what you need. Um, and then this whole thing is running on battery power, which is pretty cool. It's all standalone already. Um, so after getting that going, um, I managed to pull together a, uh, basically this is the, my, the final code as it, as it exists today. Um, there were a couple little hiccups uh, getting this running in Platformio, which is the, the uh, software that I generally use for most of my development. Um, I'll call out like a couple of things here had to go into the Platformio INI file. Um, and these normally get sent as I think at commands to the board. Uh, and they just get handled differently than the um, uh, Arduino IDE. Um, so here I'm defining my region, uh, telling it unconfirmed packets, and the board has this little LED on it, which for my use case isn't going to make any difference on whether it's there or not, except for battery usage. Um, so this was sending data, and now I have made an Internet of Things ruler. Kind of neat but in and of itself, not totally remarkable. Um, and I think where the really cool opportunity comes in is when we can start thinking about um, time series information on this data and sort of aggregating data over long periods. Um, and the way I wanted to do that was to get all of this information into Google Sheets because I don't know if anyone ever gets really like stuck on a Google or like, sorry, just a spreadsheet problem. But the thing you usually end up doing to procrastinate is playing around with the charts. Um, and it turns out that Google Docs has some really great charts uh, for visualizing this kind of information, excuse me, information. So thanks to the Hackster IO uh, document that Travis was referencing at the top of the meeting, um, I was able to feed this information into Pipedream um, and then I get a representation of what that data was that I passed in. And then I'm able to take that data and sort of send it off to Google Sheets in whatever format that I want. Um, and so here, the reported at date comes back in Unix time. And so I do a little bit of manipulation here. And this is really just um, Excel formatting around it. So I don't have to do anything in my actual spreadsheet, kind of doing some of this in advance. Um, and then this is just the distance. That's all the information that I'm sending through. Um, and so with that, I was able to pull together this chart. And what we're seeing here is actually, this is just the distance from my desk to my ceiling pretty consistently. Um, and then by running this for 24 hours, sitting on my desk on battery power, I ran into a couple of these spikes. And it turns out when the board is in, unable to uh, return a successful reading, the uh, the laser rangefinder board. It returns 8190, uh, which is something like 15 feet if you convert it from millimeters. Um, so all I had to do in my code, if we remember, I had a little bit of uh, logic up here. If I had sensed that, then I just kind of try a couple more times until I get a reading. And if it still fails, then I'll just return zero. Um, eventually, I'll probably change this to a null reading and sort of move on. Because uh, I don't want to, uh, a bunch of misleading zeros. Um, so when this is actually operating from like sort of a supply chain, like in situ in this trash can, um, the chart will probably look a little bit more like this, where over time, the can will start full. So the distance from the coffee to the top of the lid will be shorter. And then as coffee usage sort of progresses, uh, it'll sort of drop to the maximum bottom. And then we would expect this to reset and then refill. Um, and there's probably a bit more work to do here um, in terms of making this maybe a little bit more intuitive. I can invert these values and we can watch the, the actual level drop as opposed to the distance increase, for instance. Um, but all of those things become really easy after we have that information in uh, a spreadsheet. Uh, so my next step oops, uh, is to put together a little bit of an enclosure. Um, this is largely just the work I was doing last night, but my uh, sort of design reference for this is to think of a smoke detector. And so I think my 
uh, sensor device will be detachable from the lid so that they don't have to carry the entire trash can lid over to their desk if they need to charge it up, for instance. Um, and then it should be really easy just to sort of attach it to the bottom of the lid. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is modeling out the various components. Uh, so that's a 18650 battery is my giant cylinder. And then uh, that help tech cube cell um, is rendered. I, I threw the model into Blender just to get a nice model or render out of it earlier today. And that's what's on the far right there. Uh, one of the cool benefits of all of this is it's open an opportunity for me to host another hotspot. Uh, so the building that the coffee shop is in has uh, really graciously allowed me to make use of their roof. Um, so this is going to provide a lot of helium coverage in uh, downtown Oakland now. Uh, so it'll go probably all the way at the top of this pole, and then I'll be able to power it over um, Ethernet. Uh, power over Ethernet this would be great. Uh, and then these are kind of my next steps um, to wrap up the enclosure, get some testing of it actually in use, um, and then do any other sort of iteration. It, sorry, excuse me, iterations on the device that uh, we highlight and um, get that hotspot installed. And that's that. That yeah, was probably pretty quick. Looks pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's fantastic, Joey. Uh, thank you very much for presenting. And um, uh, can you take a few uh, Q and A's uh, following this? Yeah, definitely. I uh, probably had too much coffee today. I realized I went pretty quickly through that, but uh, <laughs> uh, so let's answer some questions. Oh, you could actually add like a little gyro to it, so it only takes a reading after the lid is opened and closed. I was, yeah, I was wondering timer. about that. They're probably going to make things a little more complicated for me. Um, right now, I'm reading on a, a one hour interval. Um, so as far as the interruption time, hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, and then all of, also one of the benefits of doing this in a Google Sheet is that the uh, coffee shop owner can I just give him full access to the data. And so he can go in and remove those values and sort of maintain the chart himself. Yeah. Well, you do know that the uh, it's not going to be over what what's the trash can three feet, so your distance is never going to get greater than that, unless mm -hmm. they open the lid. Then it might get larger than that, greater than that. Right. Yeah. So I could also, to your point, probably uh, hard code in something that's just like if this value is anything over this, just don't send it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or just throw out complete outliers. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you're just reading once an hour and you get a co complete outlier, then obviously that's going to be bad data. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really anything outside of a, a foot in variation um, is probably worth disregarding. Yeah, then um, maybe read again five minutes later or something. Sure, yeah. Um, and then I guess part of all of this too is... Um, trying to figure out how to solve something in the sort of uh, most minimal way possible. Uh, so what I, you know, I really enjoyed about this is I was able to sort of pull the whole thing together in about a day um, after the parts had actually come in. Um, and the ability to disregard dashboards and things like that and just sort of say like, hey, here's raw data, like we'll figure it out and then we'll figure out what kind of dashboard you need. Um, means that I don't have to sort of make a lot of guesses on how um, the coffee shop owner is going to use this information. I can, I can really just let him run with it and figure it out and then tell me what worked for him. 